Over 10 years ago, I borrowed this TV stand from my neighbor. At the time, I really liked the modern look of it, the unique design, the, the glass shelves, and over the last decade, it's worked just fine. However, one thing that we really don't like is how small it is, and how you can't hide away the stereo, or how you can just look right through it and see all the messy cables in back. So I whipped up a design for a new one in Fusion 360. It's sort of a mid-century modern and contemporary mix. It'll have an open-backed cabinet at the bottom so I can hide away the stereo. And there's plenty of shelving to display some home decorations. And I was thinking it would look neat if I could have a continuous wavy inlay that spans across the two doors. Well, the design looks neat. I just hope the real thing comes out looking something like it. Step one was to spend some quality time in the garage going through what's left of my walnut collection. I was looking for boards that didn't have a twist and that were thick enough and that appeared to have some decent figure. Once I found the ones I liked, I hauled them downstairs to the shop. Now milling up these long boards in my tiny basement shop sure presented a challenge. I had to position my planer so that I'd start outside the door. And since I don't have a planer sled that long, I just fed each board through on one side and then flipped it over each time. Using this technique, the boards eventually end up being very close to flat once they've reached their desired thickness. Then with all the boards surfaced, I could spread them all out over the shop and roll around in them like Scrooge McDuck. Next came putting a flat edge on one side of each board. Just like with the planer, I had to set this up so that I started outside the shop. Also, to help me keep things perfectly square, I used a couple feather boards to firmly hold the stock up against the fence as I pushed it over the machine. This certainly wasn't easy. Balancing these boards while trying to keep them flat on the surface of the joiner, that was definitely a challenge. But eventually, I was able to get one good edge on each one, and that's all I needed. Then, referencing that good edge, I could put a second one onto each board over at the table saw. But again, working with boards this long is such a challenge in my little shop. I had to pay big money to convince the shop boss to come down and help me lift each board as I pushed it through, just so that it could slide up on top of the workbench that's against the back wall of the shop. But you can tell by the look on her face that she was enjoying every minute of it. Now to make each of the panels, I figured the easiest method would be to use my biscuit joiner to help me keep things aligned during the glue ups. So I dusted off this old guy and began to make some marks down a couple of the boards where I'd like to add some biscuits. Then with all the locations laid out, I clamped the board in place and went down the line cutting a slot at each point. Next I could add some glue squish in the biscuits, and fit the boards together. Then I just closed them up in the clamps and set it off to dry. And once it was dry, I could take it out and carefully scrape off any of the glue squeeze out. At this point, it was just a marathon of repeating this process. Laying out the marks, cutting for biscuits, gluing it up, and then taking it out once it was dry. Now with all this excitement, I figured it would be best to slow down a bit and do some sanding before things really got out of hand. So I smoothed out all the seams and I took care of any remaining glue squeeze out. Then at the table saw, I could cut each piece down to their final dimensions. Except for the long pieces, I had to use my track saw for them. But at this point, the pieces were prepped and ready to go. Next, I combined the power of flathead screws along with the unparalleled supremacy of walnut to create a massive fence on my miter gauge. 
Then, with it being perfectly square to the temporary fence on my table saw, I could put in my dado stack and cut some rabbits on the ends of the long boards. Using this technique, I could support the piece really well so that I could make the cut safely as well as accurately. And there's one bit that gets a notch cut out for a support piece, so I cut that out and then I could remove the dado stack. Now all that was pretty exciting. We better do some more sanding to calm ourselves down. So I mentioned support pieces a moment ago. Now these will be a couple boards mounted on end in the back of the unit and will add rigidity and allow the TV stand to hold heavy loads. And to join them to the vertical sides, I'll be using dowels as loose tenons. I start off by marking where the dowel jig needs to be placed and then I clamp it into position. I drill out the holes in both pieces and test fit the joint. With it all looking good, I go ahead and I glue up the first few pieces. I run some glue down the dados and then I fit the first riser into place. And just like any seasoned woodworker knows, when pieces don't fit just right, you simply beat them with a mallet until they do. Then I can gently put the other section into position, get it lined up just right, pop on some clamps, and check for square. The middle shelf can then get beaten into submission, and then clamped on to dry. All right. At this point, I could put on the top middle riser. as well as the left side. Next, the second support piece gets doweled into position and set down into the notch and joined to the last riser. And then that all gets clamped up. The last piece of the main structure to go on was the top. Now, I knew that it was going to take some time to get into position, so while you wait, allow me to play you the song of my people. It goes something like this. And now for my next trick, I'll make the hole in the notched riser in the back completely disappear. When it comes to the feet for the TV stand, I really didn't want anything thin and spindly. I figured since my wife likes the way I look, and there's certainly nothing thin and spindly about me, that I'd go for a plus size, chunky looking foot. I started by milling up a thick piece of walnut and then laminating on another to make it even bigger. I planed it down to size and I began cutting out the blocks over at the miter saw. Then I tilted the saw just a bit to add a small taper onto each one. Then I put on a small chamfer onto the bottom edges over at the belt sander. And then I could position each one and glue it onto the bottom of the TV stand. I also sprinkled a pinch of salt onto the feet as well so that they wouldn't slide or move once clamping pressure was applied. All right, now it's time for the cabinet doors and that curvy inlay. The first step was to cut out a few very thin strips that are all the same thickness as the kerf of my bandsaw. With that done, I scribbled on a wavy line down the center of the door panel. Then, in one fluid motion, I cut the piece into two while trying my best to follow the line without stopping or slowing down. I lightly sanded the rough bandsaw blade marks, added some glue, 
dropped in a thin strip and clamped it up to dry. Then I just repeat the same process again. I draw on another curvy line and take it over to the bandsaw where I'm sure Ray Charles could have made a more accurate cut than me. Add some glue, drop in a thin strip, and clamp it up to dry. Now it's looking good. I was thinking it needed just one more wavy line to finish it out. I make the cut, some glue, drop in the inlay, and squeeze the snot out of it in the clamps. Once it was dry, I could take it over to the planer and get it all smoothed out. Then using the table saw and the miter saw, I could cut the doors to their final dimensions. Now since I'm not using any door poles, I needed to add a small cove to the inside edge of each door for my fingertips. I set up some stop locks on the router table and slid each door across the bit. Then each door got a set of hidden hinges. And to get them mounted, I just used a jig to get the holes drilled into the right place. Then I could just drop them in and fasten them in with screws. Now to get the doors into the cabinet, I carefully positioned them into place using some playing cards. When I had them oriented perfectly and in just the right spot, I went around to the back and I traced the mounting holes. At this point, I could drill them out, fasten on the hinge plates, and clip the door into position. Last thing to put on was a pair of small push to open latches. These will act as door stops as well as to allow me to get my fingers into the groove on the inside edge. Everything got a thorough sanding up to 220 grit and then I was ready for finish. And for that, I'm using Odie's oil. This stuff is a non-toxic wood finish and stabilizer. Application is pretty simple. I just use a non-scratch scrubbing pad and I rubbed it into the wood. Then after it sat for about an hour, I went back and I buffed out any excess with a cotton rag. This stuff really brings out the beauty of the black walnut and it offers some protection as well. It smells wonderful and it's even food safe too in case you get hungry. Afterwards, I'll let it sit for a few days to give the finish some time to fully cure. And then shop boss and I can lug this thing upstairs and get it into place. I used some little clips to help me hide all those pesky cables and then it was done. Just check this thing out. Didn't it turn out gorgeous? The wavy inlays are definitely an eye catcher. But the figure of the walnut, it's just stunningly beautiful in some areas. Having some extra shelf space to display some decorations is nice. But what's really nice is not having to look at all that tangled mess of cables any longer. And it's so cool how the doors operate. This thing just turned out fantastic. I love it. If you'd like to make one for yourself, I'll have detailed step-by-step -step plans available on my website over at fishersshoponline.com. Hey, if you feel I've earned it, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay. Butt is fat. Holy crap, Keith. stinks. The router caught just a bit as I was putting this down and uh, just gouged out a little bit. It didn't go all the way through, but dang it.
Well, I ended up doing some surgery on that one spot where the router caught and gouged out the side, and I think I have it just about perfect now. I filled it in with some CA glue and used activator and just shaped it with sandpaper, and it feels perfect. So I think I'm going to go with that.